I've been looking at a small display for my Raspberry Pi projects for a while now, and I recently came across this 7-inch LCD panel with built-in multipoint capacitive touch from a company called Andesine. The particular features which drew me to this model were the HDMI input signal and the built-in sound output. Now, Andesine was very kind and supplied me with a unit for review, so let's have a look and see how well it works. The unit comes in a fairly generic box labelled as a Wii Maxit 7 inch touch monitor. It's very well packaged and inside the box you get the LCD panel itself, an HDMI cable for connecting to any device that can drive HDMI such as your laptop, desktop, switch etc. You also get a USB cable which is for connecting to the touchscreen function you get a set of speakers, a stand, and then mounting kits for both the Raspberry Pi 4 and 3. Uh, and those of course come with all the required standoffs and screws, and you even get a small screwdriver so you don't actually need any extra tools to put this thing together. The stand itself simply consists of two plastic legs that can be screwed onto the back of the panel. And you can do this in two different positions to give you different levels of tilt. And the fixing screws and the screwdriver then are all included in the package. Now the speakers that come with it are not initially mounted onto the screen. So first of all, we can just use it as a simple monitor. Um, and if you want to connect it as a simple monitor to something like your laptop, then it's a good option not to fit the speakers um, so you don't actually get any second sound channel playing through the LCD panel. So that's what I'll do first then. Uh, I'll use it in this mode and connect it up to my laptop and see how it works as a quick and portable desktop extension. So all I have to do is plug the HDMI output from my laptop into the panel and then connect a micro USB power supply. Now the screen uses around 0.3 to 0.5 of an amp, so I've just connected it to the USB port on my laptop, and that should provide enough current for this device. These, this will of course reduce the battery life on your laptop if you're running it from battery, but it does mean that you're not tied then to an electric socket, and it does become a truly portable second screen. So at the moment, my laptop is simply duplicating my display. But if I go into the display settings, I can scroll down and tell Windows to extend my display. Going back up again, I can then see the little diagram of where my screen is placed, and I can then drag it across so that my second screen is on the left. And I now have a new desktop area to the left of my main display. And as you can see, I can drag and drop Windows onto this area. Now having this extra workspace is especially fantastic for me, uh, and if you're doing any sort of coding work, um, you do need a number of panels open to see what you're doing. Uh, and my small laptop screen can get quite limiting having to hide and display information panels as I code. So having this second screen lets me work away from the office while still having a usable IDE layout. Looking at the display quality, uh, this unit works incredibly well. Uh, viewing angles on the 7 inch IPS screen are great, and the display looks bright and sharp. Now compared to my Dell laptop display, the colours are very slightly muted, but overall I'm very very pleased with the result. So that's using the LCD panel as a simple portable second display. Let's now see how well it works with our Raspberry Pis. So I'll want to have sound with my Raspberry Pi setup. So each speaker comes with an adhesive pad on its back, so you can just stick them into place on the circuit board, and then use the trailing leads to plug the connector in and connect the sound. The panel is cleverly designed to allow both version 3 and 4 Raspberry Pis to be mounted on the back of the screen without needing any extra cabling. The two mounting packs consist of HDMI and USB adapters that simply plug the Raspberry Pi into the screen connectors once the Pi has been mounted onto its fixing points. So the process is to first use the supplied standoffs to mount the Raspberry Pi board securely onto the back of the LCD panel. 
you'll then see that the HDMI and USB ports align with the HDMI and touch connections on the LCD panel. The connector kits then plug into place to make the connections between the Pi and the screen. And this is actually a very neat solution and turns the whole assembly into a very sturdy but single unit. Now power for the screen is taken from the Raspberry Pi, so you'll still only need a single power adapter. You just need to make sure that you're using one with enough current to supply the extra 0.4 amps that the screen will use. Now the manual suggests a 3 amp supply for the Raspberry Pi 4 and a 2 amp for the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, so any of the official Raspberry Pi power plaques um, will work fine. To use the display, you don't need any extra software. The standard Raspberry Pi OS image is all you need. You do however need to tell Linux what settings to use for the display as it's not a standard resolution. So you'll need an SD card image ready prepared for your Raspberry Pi. And this can either be one you've used before or just create a new one. If you're using the Raspberry Pi Imager app, just select the appropriate option for a desktop or gaming setup. And once that's all ready, then you need to edit the config.txt file. So um, the easy way to do this is to put the SD card into your main PC and open up your file manager app. You should see two extra removable drives and the one labelled boot is the one we want. So open this up and in the root folder you'll find the config.txt file. Now you need to open this with a plain text editor and, and not a full word processor and then add the following lines at the bottom of the file. So this code is given in the screen's manual um, but I'll also put it on the project page in my main website and do check the description for links to that. So if we go through these lines, um, they're basically telling the Raspberry Pi in this first one here that the screen can play all sound formats, even if it does report that it can't. We then increase the maximum current supplied by the USB ports to 1.2 amps. We then force the HDMI output to be on. We then boost the HDMI signal levels. Set the display rotation so that it matches with the stand. We then force the sound data to be sent over HDMI. And then finally, we actually set the HDMI output format to a custom mode, which is the 1024 by 600 pixels of the screen's native resolution at 60 hertz, and then giving it a 15 to 9 aspect ratio. Now, hopefully, these settings will work for you. And indeed, they did initially work for me. Um, it wasn't until I started to use sound output that the screen started to go blank at random intervals, making it pretty much unusable. But after a bit of playing around, uh, I did pin it down to the signal boost levels. So if you do find this happening, uh, just re-edit the config.txt file and increase the config HDMI boost value. Now the maximum you can set this to is 11, uh, but do try and find the minimum value that works for you. So I f mine came out to be 10, uh, and that made the system work perfectly well. Now I, I did actually think that this might be a power supply issue uh, as the sound output will add extra current draw but running the screen in VGA resolution worked fine with no screen blanking even if the, I was running at full volume uh, and also powering the LCD via separate power supply had no effect so this does seem to be a, a simple signal level issue. But with this fix in place you should now have a Raspberry Pi working as a small desktop computer. When connected to the Raspberry Pi, the screen resolution works at the panel's native size of 1024 by 600 pixels. And for 7 inch display, this is actually quite a good resolution, and it's significantly better than the official 7 inch display from Raspberry Pi themselves, which runs at 800 by 480. As before, the display looks great, and with it being a true HDMI connection, we're not going to have any of the frame rate issues that we would see with an SPI based panel. The touch screen function works straight out of the box. Uh, we've got 5 point capacitive touch, so driving it with a finger is very easy, um, and it's just like using your mobile phone. The accuracy seems great, and although the Linux OS isn't particularly designed for touch, you can easily navigate around and do most of the tasks you need by touch alone. If you do need an on-screen keyboard, you can install the Matchbox keyboard package, which will give you a way to type without having a physical keyboard connected. Sound output is very good, 
Uh, okay, the speakers are not top of the range Bose quality, but for general use they are absolutely fine and have a good volume range. If you're watching a video or, as we'll see in a bit, playing a game, you'll get all the sound you need. And the unit also has a headphone socket if you want to keep things a bit more private. Volume is controlled by the multifunction thumb wheel. So press it in to change the function and then turn it to adjust the value. And on this particular model here, this controls both volume and screen brightness. So in this configuration, you've basically got a Raspberry Pi powered tablet. Um, I can think of endless applications where this sort of unit would be ideal and having everything built into one unit with a single power supply allows you to easily build standalone units or control panels with full touch control. But one of the reasons I wanted to get hold of a display like this was to create a small retro gaming cabinet. So let's load up a RetroPie installation and see how that performs on this LCD screen. Again, all we need to do is burn the RetroPie SD card image and then edit our config.txt file. And again, I'm using an HDMI boost value of 10 on my setup to just to make sure that the sound works well. So once this is all booted up, um, I can really say that it just works. The screen looks great and having sound built in is a great bonus. Uh, the speakers, of course, could easily be moved from their position on the back of the panel so mounting this into a cabinet will be no problem. I'll then have the full Raspberry Pi setup, which I can attach the controls to and create a great little desktop gaming unit. So overall then, um, I think this is a really good and a very useful addition to your Raspberry Pi setup. If like me, you don't use your Raspberry Pi as a day-to-day -day work machine, it lets you create a Raspberry Pi as a very portable computer system but you can simply put wherever you want when you need a Pi for projects and so on. The GPIO connector is fully unused and easily accessible for both wire connection and hats. And being mounted on the back, this gets it off the table and away from any bits of wire and other conductive debris you've got lying around. As a base for a gaming project, it's, it's quite fantastic. Um, all the work has been done for you to get a full frame rate display with good quality sound output and all you need then is a box and some buttons. So thanks again to Andesine for supplying this unit to me and I'll put links in the description to their Amazon sales pages so if you do fancy getting hold of one of these units um, then you can use those. And if you fancy picking one up before Christmas Day 2021 then there is a 10% discount code which again I'll leave in the description. So I hope you've enjoyed this video review. Uh, please do like and subscribe to my channel for more projects and tutorials. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.